Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this video you will learn everything that you need to know about HTTP requests, responses, body, headers and much much more. And you will have enough knowledge to debug requests in the Network Requests tab inside Google Chrome. So let's jump right into it. So the first question is what is HTTP request? It's the most popular way of communicating between client and server. And the question is what are client and server? Normally they suggest two computers, so your browser that you have at home, this is client, so you request some data from the server. And server is simply a computer which gives you some response. So you are answering for some data and server sends you something back. As you can see here, I opened the page demo real world IO. And this is the nice project where people in different languages are implementing the same project. But here I want to show you the bare minimum of HTTP request. So here we can click inspect in Google Chrome and I can make this bigger. Now we can jump inside network and reload the page. As you can see here, the first request that we are getting here is a document. So this is this request. And this is the bare minimum of every page that you will get. So you are getting the content of this page. So this is actually the page which will load it here. And here in the preview, you can see this page. So this is the whole markup of this page. And as you can see here, we have a lot of requests firing on initialize. So it can be really different types of requests. You can see them here in the type column. So here we have documents, scripts, XHR requests, fonts, icons, images, and much, much more. But the most important thing to remember that all requests are stateless. So basically server doesn't store any information between the requests, which means if we are firing single request from client to the server, it is completely stateless. Yes, we are passing some information, but if we are making the next request, this is the completely new request. So there are no data shared between the requests. You can only pass some data inside the request. The most interesting for us here are XHR requests. So as you can see, the type is XHR, and this means that this is a request where we are getting some information from our API. Why they are so popular? Because normally, nowadays, we are building a lot of front-end applications and we are using APIs on backend. So all these requests are to get some additional information for our JavaScript applications in the front-end. So let's have a look on the most important information inside single request. So as you saw, we can just click on the request to see these tabs. As you can see, there are a lot of tabs here. We are interested in the first tab header. And the most important information here is request URL. This is the URL that we want to get from our server. So as you can see, this is the full URL. Then we have slash API articles and some additional parameters. The next important thing that we have here is request method. And actually there are several request methods. This is get, post, put, patch and delete. So actually we're using get if we want to get some information from server. Then we have post and we're using it to save something or create. So normally if you for example want to create an article, we must do a post request for our backend. If we have put request, this means that we are updating something. For example, we have an article and we want to update some fields. This is why we are doing put request. So we are updating some information inside this article. The next one is delete. So obviously, if you want to delete an article, then your request method will be delete. And the last one, which is actually the newest, is patch. This is actually partial update. So actually put was defined to override all fields of some entity, for example, an article. And patch is needed if you want to do a partial update, for example, just change a title of the article. And you can always see the request method here. The next important part is status code. So as you can see here, we're getting status code with green circle and this is 200, which means everything is fine. And actually I made the whole video regarding status codes. I will link it here on the top. So don't forget to check it out. 
So actually, status codes is the smallest amount of information that we can get from the server to understand if our request was successful. So at least you need to know that green is good and red is bad. The next point is request and response. So actually, when we are making the request to the server, we have two parts. We have the request, this is information that we send for the server, and we have response, this is information that we are getting from the server. So everything that you can see here, except of these response headers, is our request, so all this information. What you see here on the third tab is our response. And this is how it looks like, so actually not super readable. And exactly for this we have here the tab preview, where we have the predefined version of our response. So this actually means that preview is exactly like response, but here we can really read something, because here it's impossible to read because it's just plain text. So normally you will use preview if you want to see what you are getting back, and you will use response tab if you want to copy it and paste somewhere. The next point is regarding passing additional information to our backend. So normally when we have get request, as you can see in the bottom we don't have any body. But here I want to clean everything, make it a little bit smaller and jump to sign up page. As you can see we have here sign up form and I can simply click sign up. As you can see in our network we got several requests. But actually this is nice to filter them by XHR, because we are not interested in text plane or icons, or at least fonts, so we really want to see only our API requests, and then we can easier check them. So let's check our request here, and this was our post request, because we want to register user. And you can see here the request method was post, and it is read, so it's not successful. And actually here on the bottom you can see request payload or body. So this is exactly the data that we passed for our backend. And as you can see it is empty. Now if we will provide some information here, doesn't matter what information, and I will click sign up. As you can see we were registered successfully, but the most interesting for us is this new request. So it was post, and in the bottom you can see that we passed a lot of information here inside our request. So exactly this request payload is body of the request. So actually what you see here is already a predefined version of our body, so we really can read it. If we want to see the source, we can click here view source, and this is how it really looks like in our request. So if you need to copy your body somewhere, you can just click view source and here copy the source of the body. Or click view parsed and view predefined version again. The last thing that we want to pass inside our requests are headers. So what are headers? It's an additional way to pass some information. We can pass it not directly, for example through cookie, and this information will be attached automatically, or we can pass it by hands. So let's have a look. We're here inside headers tab, and here we have two different types of headers. So as you can see we have here response headers and request headers. So request headers are headers that client sends with the request together. And response headers are headers that server attaches when he gives us back the response. So let's have a look first on request headers. This is how it looks like. So normally headers are just key and value. Here I want to go only through requests that you really need to know, because there are a lot of them in every request, and normally you don't need to know about all fields of your request. So first of all, from request headers you need to know origin. So as you can see this is property origin, and this is from where our request was done. So actually the request doesn't have anything to do with the page where we are. But actually this origin is exactly the page what was opened here. It can be really different and we can provide different origin, but by default here we have our URL that was here for us when we made this request. The next important request header is of course content type, you can see it here. So by content type we are providing server in what content type we want to get data back. So normally when we are working with APIs we are providing back application slash JSON. 
but it doesn't actually mean anything because server can send us whatever, we are just saying what we want to get. And the last important request header is this user agent. So here we are giving for the server a lot of information regarding our operational system or browser, and server can use this information to give us different data. Now let's talk about headers that we are getting back from the server. So here let's scroll a little bit, I will close this tab, now we are looking on response headers. And there are quite a lot of important stuff here. First of all we have here content type. As you can see it is exactly the same how we requested, but it can be different. So normally server will give you the response in the same content type like you asked, but it's not sure. So it can be possible that you are saying that you want JSON and server gives you for example XML or something other. This just means that server is not working correctly. One more important property is this set cookie that you can see here. Actually this is how server can set cookie in our browser. So set cookie means that all cookies that are here will be set to our browser automatically. So client won't do anything, but because we are getting back the response, we can automatically get some cookies. And the last important response header is this group of headers here on the top. They are all starting with access control and then some name. And they are super important for security, so let's go through them. So let's start with this, access control allow origin. So this is the origin that is allowed to get data. What does it mean? So as you saw in our request we had some origin. And this means that only from this website we can request data from the server. And if we have another origin we can't request this data. But actually we can set in the client our origin, which means it's not the best way to make our application safe. The next field that we need to know here is access control allow methods. And I already went through all methods that are there for HTTP request. So actually here we are specifying all allowed methods. And as you can see we have here get post options, put, patch and delete. So I went through all of them except of options. We need options when we are making cross origin requests. So for example our API is on one domain and our frontend from where we are making requests is on another domain. So to make this we need this option requests to be allowed. So actually here we can specify everything that we can make from our client. And normally if you are getting the response method is not allowed, it means that it was not set in allow methods. And the last important header here is this access control allow credentials. And actually this means when it is in true that we can attach cookies to our cross origin requests. So by default when we are making requests from first domain to the second domain, we can't attach cookies there. And by providing this field, this is completely possible. So this was everything that you need to know about HTTP requests and how to debug them inside Chrome. So normally when you are getting some validation errors or some problems with backend, the easiest way to check your errors is to open network tab and check the response by yourself. Also, if you want to improve your programming skills, I have a lot of advanced courses regarding various web technologies. And I will link them down in the description box below, so don't forget to check them out. And if you like this video and you want more content like this, don't forget to put thumbs up to support me and subscribe to the channel. And if you didn't like this content, maybe consider watching it once again on increased speed, this might help. And I will see you in my next video.